What's up everybody, Axel Fuentes here, and we're back for some more American Truck Simulator. So I'm still in the Peterbilt 3, excuse me, Peterbilt 389, with uh, the Optimus Prime skin. And this time we have uh, an Amazon Prime trailer to continue our uh, unification of the Primes. And we're in Las Vegas today, and we have an easy run today. We're just taking some empty pallets from a Best Buy here in Las Vegas, and we're taking those back to the Amazon in Flagstaff, Arizona. And I'm still using a 10-speed manual transmission because I don't feel like using the 13 or the 18. Just, just to aggravate people who... Whoops, wrong button. Just to, you know, aggravate those who are obsessed with the 18-speed the manual for some reason. Alright, I know we're not driving a Swift, but again, Swift, swing wide, it's a friggin' trailer. Getting up on the curb to make this turn work. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay, maybe not so nice and not so easy because the light is the light is changing. This light lasts like five and a half seconds, maybe less. Of course, that of course it leads out to a stop sign. Why would it lead to a traffic light? We don't we don't have traffic lights here in Las Vegas. We got traffic lights. Traffic lights are for losers. Can't even see around there. Clear, clear. I feel like in real life, Las Vegas traffic is not this clear. Anyhow, we're good on fuel, good on diesel exhaust fluid, so yep, all we gotta do is head over to this Best Buy and uh, pick up some pallets. Yeah, as you guys can tell, I'm I'm terrible with judging stopping distance. But uh, yeah, we have this lovely blue uh, Amazon Prime trailer. Which, uh, it's a really nice trailer. Uh, with really, really good detail. Only problem is it's crashed my game twice now. I was customizing it and I accidentally tried putting a, a wind deflector on it. And uh, it crashed the game. And then I tried, uh... I tried putting a chrome door on it like I had on it previously, but that also caused the game to crash, so I can only <laughs> I can only have it in the drive end configuration with uh, either a standard door or a roll up door. If not it will it will crash the game. for having that narrow power band. And honestly, after after I finish this video, I don't think I'm going to use the Peterbilt 389 in this game again because it is a really beautiful truck. It's a really awesome truck to drive, but it's just difficult to drive because long wheelbase, long hood, I miss my international LT that I drive normally in the game, so probably going to be going back to uh, driving international LTs and maybe Freightliner Cascadias, even though I don't like the Freightliner Cascadia as much. Well, that was going to be interesting, me having to get over into that right lane for that next turn. And we know that four-wheeler drivers hate trucks, so yeah, this will be interesting. Anyway, while we're here admiring this Peterbilt, uh, I actually had two uh, Optimus Prime 
two big Optimus Prime toys when I was little. Well, say when I was little, but I had them until last year when I sold both of them to, uh... Actually, no, one of them I sold to a collector. The other one, I don't remember what happened to it. I think, I think it ended up in the trash, honestly, which is sad. But, uh, when the first movie came out, uh, in 2000... 2007? I think it was a 2000, 2007 movie. Um, there was one, the most notable one, the leader class Optimus Prime. Which is the one I wanted, but at the time, you know, 2009, what? Goodness, 2009, I was in like fourth grade. Maybe third grade. And uh, at the time, like, my family and I weren't doing too well, so I, I really didn't think I was going to get any Christmas presents that year, but. Oh no, I got that one for my birthday, but it wasn't the it wasn't the original skinned Optimus Prime with uh, the red and blue flames. It was uh, oh yeah, I remember it was the Nightwatch Optimus Prime that uh, that I got, which was the same figure, but um, whoops, bad shift. Same figure, but uh, different colors. Basically, it was uh, it was more like a it was more like an like a Pretty much the same color as the Amazon trailer that I currently have. Alright, there it is. Empty pallets from Las Vegas, Nevada to Flagstaff, Arizona. And it is a high priority one, so hopefully I'll be able to do this one in a good amount of time. But basically, the it had the same colors as uh, this trailer, so that dark blue on the door was the main color. And then all the details were that um, light blue color. And I had that figure for years, and then Revenge of the Fallen came out, and I got the leader class Optimus Prime for that one. And spoilers for that movie, uh, there's a part where Optimus combines with uh, another Transformer to get the uh, power of Optimus Prime. And I had I had both figures, and you could combine the two. And then recently, I sold I sold those to a collector, but uh, the original Nightwatch Optimus Prime that I had, I don't remember what happened to that one. I really hope it didn't end up in the trash can because that was a really cool figure. Oops. Now let's go reverse, not uh, not first gear. And then I, I had little little versions, like I had the, like the Legends class and the Cyberverse class Optimus Prime figures, which reminds me that in the third, yeah, the third movie, uh, Optimus Prime actually gets a trailer. Which, uh, it only, it, it shows up in, like, three parts of the movie. It shows up, uh, at the start when they're in Chernobyl. Uh, and he turns the trailer into, like, a weapons platform and grabs, uh, weapons and armaments from there. Uh, there's another one where he's driving through, through Chicago with the trailer and the trailer gets knocked, knocked by a Decepticon. Which means someone didn't run their pre-trip inspection. <clears throat> And then he uses, he turns it into a jetpack and then flies the jetpack into a Decepticon and destroys it. Which begs the question, why did Optimus Prime have a trailer in the third movie when he's never needed one in the first two movies? That part never really made any sense to me. But then again, who am I to question Michael Bay and his explosive movies? Okay, it does have an air horn. <laughs> and yes, believe it or not, there are actually trucks out there that don't have air horns. My company is renting two. Whoa, that is not a shift I wanted to do. Uh, my company, in real life, has two rental trucks. No, we have one that we have four. Uh, because so there's. When I first started, there were sixteen. Oh, okay, you're letting me go. Thank you. Thank you, Jeep. I appreciate that. Even though it was completely unnecessary. <laughs> Thanks, Broski. I appreciate your face.
What was I saying? Oh yeah, so in real life, my company, when I first started, uh, there were 16 of us, counting me. But now there's only 11. And so we have uh, four rental trucks from Truckway, International, from Truckway National Lease. And two of them are, f well, they're labeled on our computer systems as International MA. But they're, they're basically International Durastars. And uh, both of those do not have an air horn. They have a regular, uh, a regular little weak city horn, uh, but no air horn, which is stupid. But even then, what's even more stupid is that on Durastars with air horns, it's not a lanyard that you pull, like every other truck in existence. It is a, um, it's a button on the steering wheel that you press to get your air horn. So, and it's an electronic switch, so if the truck is off, then, you know, no air horn. And on my last job, I actually ran into that problem with it, uh, with the truck being off, because I was parked outside a, I was delivering to a mire. Okay, my shifting is terrible today. I should pay attention to that some more. But, uh, I was delivering to a mire in, uh, I want to say Avon, Ohio. And uh, I, I had I had finished delivering to it, and I was just parked outside uh, in the backside of the mire, just having a lunch. And then there's this uh, pickup truck with a box trailer next to me, and that's being used by one of the vendors. And then there's another truck backing up into the area where we are, and he's backing up real close to the to the to the Tundra pickup truck. And uh, I was trying to hit the air horn, but uh, since the truck was off. I couldn't do it, so I had to, like, very quickly turn the truck on and just lay on the air horn. And a good thing I did, too, because the the other truck that was backing up was, like, if I didn't hit the air horn, he would have plowed right into the front of that Toyota Tundra and would have completely destroyed it. And when I hit the horn, uh, the truck driver stopped, and he stopped, like, I kid you not, like, about five or six inches away from the front end of that poor Toyota Tundra. But, uh, he would have stopped sooner if, you know, the truck if the truck didn't have a stupid electronically controlled uh, or electronic switch for the air horn. Yes, please, all of you go around me. This It's going to take me a couple hours to get up this hill, so all of you go around me. With the police officer behind me, too. I hope that they go around me as well, because it'll take me a minute to get up this hill. I realize I have a 500 horsepower Cummins, but apparently the Cummins is in the back of the line as far as truck diesel engines go. And here we are at Hoover Dam. Even though you can't really see it, and I need to drive on the road, maybe that might help. Yep, Hoover Dam, which, ironically enough, Hoover Dam is actually a location in the Transformers franchise in the first movie, and it's where Megatron was being stored for all these years, and apparently President Hoover constructed the dam to hide uh, Megatron and to hide the AllSpark's energy. There is a scene in the first Transformers movie where Optimus Prime uh, and the rest of the Autobots are meeting up with Bumblebee, and uh, all the cars, like Tokyo Drift, the 180 turn, including Optimus Prime. And then there's a highway chase scene with a uh, with a. Uh I'm just gonna go around here. Never mind the car behind me that I just cut off. Uh, there's a highway chase scene, there's a highway battle between Optimus Prime and uh, Bone Crusher, one of the Decepticons. Uh, Decepticon flies through a bus, sets it on fire. Uh, Bone Crusher gets his arm and head chopped off, and uh, there's a mom driving a minivan with her kid and screeches to a halt as to not get hit by the fighting robots, and the kid's like, cool, mom. 
then they go to a city called Mission City, and we're off to the races for the final battle. Pretty fun action-packed movie, provided you start watching it about a quarter of the way in. I also remember there being uh, a DS game for the Transformers movie, and they were split off into two versions, Transformers Autobots DS and Decepticons DS, obviously the, each one letting you play as, as one of the two factions. The games are rather poorly coded and they had a, they had a really rather bland story where you were placed in control of a Create-A-Bot, as what the Wikipedia page calls it, and that was your own customizable Autobot or Decepticon. Do I get to bypass the way station, or do I have to enter it? Please let me bypass it. Ugh. Okay, fine. I'll go to your stupid way station, DOT. Wow, 80,239. Whoa, okay, that's not what I needed. Alright, so I am overweight, but, um... But, uh, not like... Not like I'll actually get in trouble for it in the game. Now to get back up to speed might be a little bit of a problem. Oh, traffic is actually somewhat clear, that's a surprise, except for that truck that's zooming in at me. But it's okay, because the speed limit here is uh, only 45, so that truck is probably slowing down anyway. Yeah, 35, that's, that's, that's what I said, isn't it? 35. Also, someone mentioned that I can turn on the voice navigation, and yes, I know you can do that, but uh, I prefer to not use voice navigation. And e even even in real life too, like whenever I'm using my GPS, I just look at it. I don't I don't have it talking to me. Of course, right when I come to a full stop, the light turns green. Murphy's Law for you. Oh. Five. Thank you. After I'm done recording, I think I'm going to take a nap because my shifting skills are pretty much non-existent today. Not to mention I'm all over the place. <laughs> I'm doing the worst kinds of shifts and I'm blocking a lane too. But that's just because I don't, I don't have a very good judgment of distance. Heck, even in real life, I don't have that much of a good judge of distance. Uh, we park our trucks in a line uh, at my in real life at my company, and a lot of times I'll be backing up in front of another truck. Or I'll be backing up into a truck, parallel parking it, and I think I've stopped in the right place. I'll get out, and there's like half a car length of space between between the two trucks. Occasionally, though, I'll probably, I'll ask like one of my coworkers to spot me if they're. If, I, if I'm done with my route at the same time and I'm parking my truck, I'll ask one of my coworkers to spot me when I'm backing them up. That's what happens when you previously work for a company that doesn't actually teach you how to drive the trucks. They just kind of throw you into the fire and uh, make you teach yourself the stuff on getting a Class B commercial license. But that's a story for another time. Am I? 
Oh, okay. I was on. So that's why that felt like it took forever, because I was on US 93. That's why I felt like it took so darn long. And now here's just pretty much a straight shot back to uh, Flagstaff. Trying to sleep. I think I see myself moving to Flagstaff, Arizona later on in my life. Just because of the climate. I think that if I ever do leave Ohio, it will be either to Florida, Texas, or Arizona. For more than likely Arizona, though. Which reminds me, there is the game does have a setting for detours and random events, and it increases it's a probability thing, so you can increase the probability of uh, random events and detours. There are two separate, um, two separate controls though, thankfully, but I think for the next video, I might increase either the detours or the random events. And with random events, you can have, like, construction, lane closures, uh, single-lane roads with a time traffic light. Uh, you can have car accidents, uh, traffic stops, traffic jams, things like that. And then with detours, you can have actual, like, road closures that set you back for hours. Pedal to the metal for this whole, for this hill right here, which on the foot pedal for this, or the, the pedal board for for the steering wheel pretty much has two settings for the accelerator. You either have nothing or go. Like my foot's to the floor, you can't go any further any past, you can't go further than that any. So you notice how I'm not even doing 50 miles an hour right now because of this hill. I'm going to downshift back to 9. Give myself a little bit more, more dancing room here. And then shift down. Shift back up to 10. It is becoming nighttime. Now, in the game, I, ha I have most of the music turned off, but if you start running late, uh, you're going to get the um, pretty much the equivalent of the hurry up music in uh, the original Mario games. Like the super action packed song will start playing, sort of as a way of telling you, you know, hurry the heck up, you're going to be late. Well, you know, you do what you can. Actually, I've thought about filming a couple of my runs at work, which I don't think I don't think the company would have a problem with that as long as I'm maintain you know maintain safety as a priority while driving. So I probably you know have my action camera on my head, and then I'd have to set up something else that would record sound because I use my phone for GPS and for music and that kind of stuff, and I don't want to be overwhelming my phone with audio clips. So I might bring like my portable go recorder so I can talk while I drive. I might just record like, you know, a little speed lapse sort of thing where I just like to record with the camera on my head but speed it up and then talk about it later on. Or I'll do like a little music montage. But if I do do that at work, I want to wait until I have my Class A license probably because 
it'll be way more interesting for you viewers, for all three of you viewers to see me, you know, driving a, uh, driving a semi instead of a, a box truck. You could call it something like, you know, a day in the life of a box truck driver, or, no, excuse me. A day in the life of a uh, food service trucker. There is Flagstaff Phoenix, two miles. Even though it's probably not two actual miles, but because the game is not on a one-to-one -one scale. And thank goodness for that, because if the game was on a one-to-one -one scale, then you might as well just become an actual truck driver and not do this for fun, like I do. Except, I am a truck driver in real life. But apparently I'm not the only one. I know, I actually know a few other truck drivers who, you know, drive for a living, but then they also play American Truck Simulator just for fun. There are a lot of people like myself who legitimately enjoy driving, which I, I don't know why. I just, ever since I got my license when I was 18, and then my CDL when I was 22, 21. Yeah, I got my CD, I got my CDL permit when I was 21, but then I, when I turned 22, I got my Class B CDL. But uh, I've always enjoyed driving. I'm not not sure why. And hey, if you know you have a job where you get paid to drive, well, that's a win for you if you like driving, which is how it is in my case. I love driving, I get paid to drive and to, you know, throw boxes into people's coolers. And it, it, it is enjoyable. So sometimes the job is, sometimes the job, you know, sucks and is absolute garbage, but when things go right, you know, it's, it's legitimately a good job to have. Alright, that stop was not as smooth as I wanted it to be, but it works, and I did not destroy the transmission in the process, so that's a win, win in my book. Alright, we got the train tracks up here too. Which, I think my trailer can fit past these, so... I'm just gonna hold sixth gear because you should never change gears when you're going over train tracks. Oh, and I don't even need to because the light's green anyway. Anyhow, welcome back to Flagstaff, Arizona. Headquarters to my company in the game. completely around even though uh no I'll just I'll just do it conventionally so that would make a little bit more sense than turning around completely and then blindsiding it actually I'm going to try it differently I'm going to do it from from in here see if I were backing this in real life I'd probably well besides using my mirrors I'd probably just like stick my head out the window Actually, most of the Class A guys at uh, my company that bring us our stuff from from our headquarters, the 53-foot trailers, they actually do this. They instead of using their mirrors, they just kind of stick stick their head out the window. All right, and I'm doing a terrible job with this so far. So far we have one pull-up. At least it's it's a 53-foot trailer and not like. You know, the pup trailer that I was using last time, which reacts a lot quicker. Okay, I'm not even close, but 
At least I'm within the lines, which is all that matters. Let's see how it looks from the outside. Uh, you know, I would say close enough and just end the video there, but... But, uh... But, uh, you know, I... I may or may not have a little bit of OCD. So, I'm gonna fix my parking for any OCD viewer- OCD having viewers out there. I've actually met a couple of delivery drivers that have OCD, and while OCD is no fun to have, uh, it does- I've seen the backs of their trailers in food service, and their trailers are incredibly organized. And there we go! 265 miles, six hours and a quarter, and about 36 gallons of fuel. And that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Optimus Prime skin with uh, the Amazon Prime trailer. And uh, say goodbye to this truck and this skin because I'm never gonna use it again. So I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Axel Fuentes.